Hello and welcome to the Swift UI tutorial. I'm Cal and today we're going to be building a game of Tic-Tac-Toe, the classic beginner tutorial programming project. This is actually the second Swift Tic-Tac-Toe tutorial I've built. Uh, the first one we built using Storyboard and UI Kit and I'll leave a link in the description to that video if you want to check it out. But today we're going to be building this game using Swift UI, so let's get stuck into it. New Swift and Xcode project. Uh, this is an app we're building. Tic-Tac-Toe Swift UI is the product name and I'm just going to hit create and finish. Cool, so I'm just going to close off the automatic preview and then we're going to say command N to create a new Swift file. This file we're going to call cell. So we're going to create a struct called cell and a cell is going to have a tile. A tile is going to be an enum and the tile we're going to have the case of naught. It's also going to be a case of cross and empty. So they're the three options that you can have on any one of our nine tic-tac-toe squares. And then a cell is going to have our tile, so our enum tile. We're going to create a function, which is our display tile, which is going to return a string. And then we're going to create a switch inside there, which is given our tile. And if it's a naught, we're going to return O character. And if it's a cross, we're going to do an X. And if it's empty, we're just going to do an empty string. And so that's the default there, is empty. Then we're going to copy and paste down that function. I'm just going to call this one tile color. And if it's a naught, we're going to return the color red. Otherwise, we're going to return the color black. And the same thing for the default, we're just going to return black. Cool. So we can head back into our content view now. And we're going to remove this text and insert a VStack. A VStack, we're going to give it spacing of... Um, let's actually create a variable for this. So we're going to say border size is equal to a CG float of five. And then we're going to give our spacing our border size variable. And then inside here, we're going to say for each zero to two. And the ID is going to be self. So we're going to go through our repetition three times. And then for each one of these, we're going to call it row. So row in, we're going to create a H stack and the spacing is going to be our border size as well. And then we're going to copy paste down our for each. So we're going to go now down. And so we're going to call this one column. And just to get things up and running, we're just going to put in a text with a X in it. Uh, this is just going to be a placeholder for now. Our text is going to have a font of system size 60. We're going to make the font bold and I'm just going to open up the preview so that we can see what we've got going. We've got a three by three grid. The frame we're going to do max width of infinity. Max height, we're going to say infinity as well, but then we want to give our text and aspect ratio of one. For content mode, we're gonna choose fit. So below our VStack, we're actually gonna give our background color of black, and you can see that's hidden everything. So now each one of our texts, we're gonna give the background color of white. With all of our spacing of our VStack and our HStack, we have created the tic-tac-toe board. So this should scale. Finally, we're just gonna give our VStack a little bit of padding so it sits off the edge. And then I hit Command N to create another new Swift file. We're gonna call this game state. This is going to be a class called game state and it's an observable object. Inside here, we're going to have a published variable, which is called our board. So this is going to maintain the state of our board and it is going to be a two dimensional array of our cell. Inside our init, we're going to create a reset board function. So this is going to set each one of our cells in our board to be empty. And so inside here, we're going to say new board is equal to two-dimensional array of type cell. And below that, we're gonna say four in zero to two. So we're gonna go through our for loop three times and we're going to create a variable called row, which is a cell array. And then we're going to go through three times again. We're gonna append a new cell, which is empty to our row. And then we're gonna append our row to our board. And then we're just gonna say board is equal to new board. Cool, so if we head back into our content view now, we can, at the top of our file, we're gonna say state object is our game state, and we're just gonna initialize a new game state variable. And then now inside our for each loop, we can say our cell is equal to our game state board, and then we're gonna get the position of our cell by passing it through our row and our column. And instead of an X, we're gonna say cell display tile, and we're gonna say our foreground color is our cell tile color. So they're the two functions we created right at the beginning. And then we're also going to create an on tap gesture, which is going to place a tile on our board. So we're gonna call that off our game state 
and we're gonna pass it through our row and our column, and we're gonna create that function inside our game state observable object. And so yeah, this function requires a row and a column. So the first thing we're gonna do in our place tile function is check to see if the position that we're trying to place either a naught or a cross is empty. And if it's not empty, we wanna return because you obviously can't override someone else's naught or cross. And then we need to actually place our tile depending on the turn, but we don't know whose turn it is yet. So we're gonna create a published variable called turn. And I'm just giving it um, tile cross so they can go first in this particular game. And then we're going to below our return statement, we're gonna check the position tile. And if our turn is equal to our cross's turn, then we're gonna place a cross. Otherwise we're gonna place a naught. Cool, so let's build and run and see what we've got so far. You can see I can place a tile and it's putting that string in each one of our buttons text, but we're not toggling our turn. So I'm just gonna head back in and actually we can steal our logic from this line. If it's the cross's turn, we're gonna make it the naught's turn. And if it's the naught's turn, we're gonna make it the cross's turn. And if we boot and run this again, you can see that we're toggling noughts and crosses uh, evenly. So the next thing to do is we want to check to see if somebody's won the game. So we're going to say if check for victory, and we obviously need to create this function here. So we're going to create that below. And that is going to return a boolean. So we've either won or we haven't. And we're actually going to move our turn toggle to this else statement because if somebody's won, we want to display that the person who had the last go has won the game. So check for victory, we're just going to return false for now. And inside our check for victory, we're going to say if the turn is equal to our tile cross. And I'm actually just going to implement our little scorecard. So we're going to create two more published variables, the first one being naught score and the second one being our crosses score. And they're both just initialized to zero. And if it's the cross's turn, we're just gonna add one to the cross's score. Otherwise it's the naught's turn. So we're just gonna add one to the naught score. And whenever there is a draw or somebody wins, we're going to show an alert. So I'm gonna create a published variable called show alert, which is initialized to be false. We're also gonna have an alert message variable, which is going to be initialized to draw. And if we head into our content view and just create an alert, there is presented is gonna be a binding value of our game state show alert. So that's the variable we just created. And then inside here, we're gonna create an alert with a title of uh, text of our game state alert message. That again, that's the variable, that's the other variable we created. And our alert, we're going to include a dismiss button. Uh, this is just gonna be the default text and we're just gonna say okay. And then once the user hits the OK button, we're going to reset the board so they can play the next game. Cool, so if we've won, we're going to show, set our show alert equal to true. We're gonna create a variable called winner. This is gonna be a string and we're gonna use our, depending on our turn, we're going to set this text to either crosses or noughts. So if it's the crosses turn, we're gonna say crosses. And if it's the noughts turn, we're gonna say noughts. And then our alert message is going to be uh, our winner plus win. So either saying crosses win or noughts win. Cool, and now we need to check for our victory because right now we're just doing false. Our is turn tile, we're going to receive a row and a column. We're gonna return a boolean based on our position of our board. If it's the, our turn, so meaning the current player's turn, we're going to return true. Otherwise we're gonna return false. Say it's the crosses turn, this function will return true, but if it's empty or naught, then it'll return false. Inside our check for victory function, we can call this is turn tile. So we're gonna say if is turn tile, and we're gonna give it the position of zero and zero, and the turn tile of one and zero, as well as two and zero then we're gonna return true. So that's meaning that there's three in a row down the left-hand side. So this is our vertical victories. We're gonna copy and paste down that two more times, changing the column in the second one to one and the column in the third one to two. So that's all of our vertical victories done. Then we're gonna copy and paste down those three and we're gonna do the horizontal victories. So, so zero, 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 one, zero, two, and then one, zero, one, one, and one, two, as well as two, zero, two, one, and two, two. And then the final thing left to do is our diagonal victory. So we're gonna do 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2, as well as we're gonna do 0, 2, 1, 1, and 2, 0. Cool, so if we go and run this and we give the crosses a win, we're gonna do the same thing on the noughts diagonal. Cool, so we've got our victories both working. The next thing to do is check to see if there is a draw. 
So we're going to create a function calling it check for draw, which is we're just going to copy and paste this check for victory function and just rename that to check for draw because it also returns a boolean. We're just going to return true for now. And inside, if we have found a draw, we're going to set the alert message to draw. We're going to show our alert equal to true. And now inside our check for draw, we're just going to go through for row in board. And then we're going to say for cell in our row. So we're going to go through our two dimensional array of ward. And if our cell tile is empty, then we're going to return false, meaning that we've found an empty tile. So therefore it can't be a draw. And that's as simple as that. So let's build and run this and see if we can navigate our way to a draw. Um, this is actually harder than it sounds. Um, so yeah, there you go. You've got a draw text there. And if we do that one again, cool. So the final thing left to do is head into our content view and we're just going to display whose turn it is. So we're just going to create a text, which is called game state turn text. And we just need to create this function in our game state. This is going to return a string. And based off of our turn variable, so we're going to steal our turn variable logic here. If it's a tile cross, we're going to return turn X and otherwise we're going to return turn O. Now this text, we're going to give a font of title and the preview is going a little bit funny here, but we're just going to give it some padding and a spacer. And you can see that we've got a turn label happening there, except it's pushed our board right down to the bottom. Um, we're going to copy and paste our text and we're going to create a string. Uh, we're going to format our string of crosses score and then the percentage sign and D we're going to get our game state crosses score. We're going to copy and paste that down right down to the bottom. We're going to change this one to noughts and display our nought score at the bottom and just put a spacer below that one. Cool. So just hitting build and run. There you have it. That's a pretty basic noughts and crosses game uh, built with Swift UI and Xcode. Uh, if you like this tutorial, consider giving it a like and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.